Hello everyone, thanks for being here. I know it's been a long time since I've posted anything related to snowmobiles, but guess what? It's just starting to get a few snowflakes not too long ago, so I guess it's time to switch back to snowmobile stuff. You know, the reason why you're here. So today is a little special video. We are going to go over my workshop, show you everything there is about it. Uh, well, not, maybe not everything, but as much stuff as I can show you. And I'm even going to go to the farm because some of my tools are over there. So I'm going to show you all about those tools. Now, let's get started in this area because this is where most of the time I'm filming my stuff. So we're going to look at the bench and let's get started. So that is my table. It is the biggest bench I've ever seen or used to build anything. I made my own table. I knew when I started building this that I wanted to have a huge bench. So I can have all my tools, every project on the bench, and I could add another project. The more space you have, the more stuff you're going to put on it. So it took me a couple hours to clean up all the table in the workshop. Let's start over here. So this uh, section is usually where I put all of the very small pieces, connectors, tie rod ends, you know, stuff like that. That's where most of it is. And then right here, that's a radio I made quite a few years ago. It came off of a, an old church. It's more than a hundred years old. I put a Bluetooth speaker and buttons in there so I can uh, have a portable speaker. So there you go, moving on. So this is where most of my tool is. Drill bits, uh, screwdrivers and hammers and pliers. I like to have my pliers over here. So I've got everything I could need here for tools. I've even got a little Dremel and debering tools, drill bits, cutters, that sort of thing. Really useful. Then here is where I usually put my snowmobiles. This is Schottky 2. We're going to talk about that later. Not in this video. And this one and this one are going to be for sale soon. Again, we'll talk about that later. This one, you probably know what it is. It's Decagon. It's in rebuild process. I wanted to do a few upgrades inside of it. Come on. There we go. Rerouting some of the uh, cooling lines, modifying the radiators adding a few things, streamlining the whole process, and maybe save a few pounds in the process. This was 10 pounds. It is a heavy girl. So let's keep moving on. This is shot key two replacement. So essentially super lightweight. It weighs basically nothing. I'm going to have its own video dedicated to it, but let's just keep moving on because it's going to be a long one otherwise. And now over here, we have Meteor 2. It's in pieces as well because I need a bigger radiator. So I took the radiator out of this one because it doesn't need as much cooling capabilities, believe it or not. I took the big square aluminum radiator that I made a few years ago, put it on this, and I just got to put it all back together and, you know, finish it. And finally, I'd be able to try it out. And then this is where I put the ZX chassis. This one is probably going to be for sale soon because I'm going to build a new one. Let's keep moving on. So if you know, you know, it's an RMK project later. Then this is where most of the part are. This is for different custom projects. So for example, this was for the jet ski. This is for the Alpha. This is for the G4. And there's a few other miss and match parts. This is RMK stuff. And you know, some of them are pretty mixed up, but at least they're in bins. So they're somewhat placed where they need to be. Of course, you could use a big cleanup over here. And then we have over here a TiVo Tornado. This was my second printer ever. It is a huge printer. It's 305 by 305 by 400 or something like that. Never used the full size, but it's really good for having very long pieces, such as, as you can see by the prints, skids. So like 165 skids. They don't normally fit on the other printers I have, so this is what I use it for. And also, it's got a custom hot end, because it used to be a Bowden style with the pusher on the side and tubes and... Didn't really like that, so I made my own hot end. It's not supposed to be pretty, it's just supposed to be functional. And then with that new hot end, I can now print TPU material, which is flexible stuff. And then over here, I put a couple of batteries. Often I have a charger here. So there we go. Hate that printer. I'm gonna get rid of it as soon as the Prusa XL shows up, if they can print TPU. Either way, moving on. Oh, you know what? I forgot something very important. So. I used to be looking for bins for all my screws, so I decided to make my own drawer. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a sight every time. Look at that, every screw, every size. It's a lot faster now to put the screws together for 
an alpha kit. So I've got even the washers, uh, locking nuts, tie rod ends, bearings, stuff like that. It's all in there and it saves me a lot of time. So this is M2 screws all the way up till M2 by 20 and then you go back to M3 going up all the way to 60. Uh, you don't need 60s, but I like to have them there still. So when you're working here, you need something, you need a screw, you just open the drawer, pick a screw and choop, back to work. Now moving on, down there is a lot of summer toys, trucks and stuff like that that I like and I use. And then often there's a mission match there, don't, don't look at that. Moving on. So this is the bins. This is where I put motors, ECs, uh, often bigger bearings. This is where most of the fancy stuff is. As you can see, there's a bunch of stuff. This is the sort of expensive pile. And then by the side of it, this is more like uh, odds and ends that you rarely ever need. You know, PCB material, resistors, electronics, stuff like that. And then on that side, this is uh, the huge sled, not printed sled. It's all, it's not complete, but you know, it's together. It's working as well. It's just uh, need to finish that project. And then this huge truck, this one fifth scale truck, you know, it always looks very small on the screen, but it is a huge truck. And I'm going to do a video very soon about that one, showing in details how to build it and how to, uh, how this one was put together, essentially. And then on top of it, you've got the sled deck with two jet skis. Of course, it's not meant for jet skis, but... They're there, because there, I've got the room. So there we go, that's where it is. And then over here, we have the printers. This is where most of the workforce comes from. So there are four Prusa. Uh, they're the Mark III S version. I've had them for years, and they've got a ton of hours on them. This is my oldest one. As you can see, even the power supply is different compared to the other ones. Let's see, look at that. And each one of these printers have got roughly the same amount of hours, or days in this case. It's ridiculous. They are awesome. I love these printers. If you want to get a printer and you don't want to put a ton of energy into fixing or R&D or whatever, get a Prusa. They last forever. I like to have this here. This is a little tray and all the residue falls down and you know, gets caught up in there. So when you clean up your residue, it's all in one place. You could just put it all in a cardboard box and send them to be recycled or you know services there is services out there that pick up that kind of stuff so there we go moving on so this zone of my basement is not really the best place to um, showcase my cleanliness I suppose this is where the rest of the stuff is so like stuff I don't often use but it's got to go somewhere so that's where I put it and then this is where my wire cutting machine the one I built by myself all it's all there and it's all working fine you might have seen a video um, a few months ago. I showed how this works. Two feeders essentially are pushing the wire all the way into that cutter over there. Then it falls into a funnel and into a little bag. You don't have to build your own track wires. Now I can supply the track wires and they're perfectly straight, perfectly cut every time. So there you go. One last thing for you to worry about. And then over here, this is the box. Uh, you know, I ship a lot of boxes every once in a while and you know, sometimes little tiny box for little tiny pieces. They need to go to like Sweden and Finland and stuff like that. So often if I can save a few bucks and buy shipping a smaller box, I do it. Otherwise, I have my stack of brand new boxes. This is like for G4 boxes and like alpha boxes. And I've got some more in there. And then this is for like uh, screw kits and stuff like that. You know, I'm stacked up. This is very expensive. Like this whole bundle comes on a semi trailer so you know you got to pay for shipping and stuff like that so lots of boxes let's keep moving on so over here this is my sander and then uh, carbon fiber cutting table some of the carbon fiber parts i don't make myself and some of them i do so when i build my own snowmobile the one over there it's all carbon fiber i build it up on this table so this is like a little jigsaw upside down there we go Okay, this is where I put all my transmitters. This is under the stairs. And I've got some transmitter over there. I like to have a transmitter per snowmobile. I don't like to have one transmitter and like 50 receivers. I don't like that. And then rebind and everything. 
I like to have one transmitter and I like to test a few different models. Some of them I really like, some of them I don't. So that's why I have so many of them. And then if you go down there, this is like uh, spare parts for like Traxxas T-Maxes and HPI Salvage and you know, vehicles I don't use often. And then I've got some pipes and mufflers and nitro engines somewhere in there. You know, random parts. So we go back around here. This is uh, the section of snowmobiles. These are brand new snowmobiles or very, like most of them are used snowmobiles, but like I find good deals on them, like 20, 30, 40, 50 bucks. Sometimes even up to 100 or 150 bucks for the most expensive ones, like maybe one of those. And I buy them. I've got a plan for every single one of them. They're not going to stay stock. Those, on the other hand, they might stay stock. So you got a Revolt, Yamaha Viper, Polaris Rush, brand new in boxes. That's a Art Attack Snowmobile. And then over here, that's a rare one, Atomic RC Snowmobile. You don't see these too often. This is a brand new, never touched, brand new in box. I'm going to build it, put it together. I said that last season, maybe, but I want to do it this year. This is a very rare model. If you see one brand new in box like that, they go for a lot of money. And then, of course, this one had a good deal in because it didn't have a ski. So there we go. Might do a conversion kit for that one. We'll see. I have the transmission, but I don't have the steering and everything. So I'll be working on that. And then here we've got some spools, filaments and stuff like that. I've got some here. If not, the rest of them are all in these drawers. And now we're almost back to the start, but let's go over here. This is some of the uh, project uh, RMK and, you know, other paint stuff. This is not the best, you know, place to put it all, but I've got space under the staircase. So that's where I put it. This box here, this is very old stuff. This is all the original parts. Like uh, if you remember, driver used to be two pieces. Now it's all one pieces and... You know, the aluminum skid for the RMK1, you might remember that. So, one day I'll dig through that box and go with you over everything. But until then, it sits in this box. And I usually don't throw stuff away unless it's really broken. So that means I still have some of those very early on side panels and, you know, that skid over there. I still have it. I want to rebuild it. And somebody gave me something pretty good to rebuild it, so... No teaser, I'll get to it when I get to it. Moving on, this table is not the table I'm the most proud of. There's just so many random stuff on it. This is a RC tank with real cannon on it. I've got some uh, cutting torches and stuff like that. Like it's 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 a mess. And it's like the, the this is the table where when I don't really know where to put something, I just kind of put it there. It needs to be fixed though. I'm not too proud of that one. And then we've got this press drill here. I was tired of having to move it all around, so I put my own two by fours and I made my own setup on a chimney. So now I can press drill parts and it's at, you know, eyes level. So it's really convenient this way. I really like that. And then we keep the best part for last. Ta-da! This is a brand new to me and also brand new in box. It was a pain to get down these tiny stairs this is a lathe. This is a metal lathe. Craftix lathe CX706. And I really like it. So we've got you've got the feet this way and you've got the cross feet the other way. I'm not entirely sure of all the names and nomenclature and everything like that, but there we go. So you can start this. You can see it's spinning by itself. You can speed it up a bit. There we go. Feeding by itself. Then you go the other way and it's the other handle and of course you can change the way that this spins so it goes the other way you probably didn't hear much of what i said but anyways i really like that little machine and i've got a few of the tools here i need and this is a little add-on i put on so i can index little holes off axis uh, wacky stuff anyways um yeah that's pretty much it for the basement as you can see uh this is most of it, most of the tools I need. I've got a few tools at the shed, at the farm, so let's get there and film what's left. So we are now at the farm and this is the workshop. Well, the farm's workshop. So as you can tell, there's agricultural machineries and 
all kinds of farm stuff in there. So I don't control everything that's happening in there, but I do normally control cleanliness. And I suppose I kind of skipped for the past little while, but I'm gonna have this clean by the next week, so it'll be fine. I just wanted to show you, I've got my own TIG welder. I've wanted to have one of those for a very long time, finally got around to purchasing one, and I really like it. I don't know much about TIG welding, but I know enough so I can work on aluminum and stainless. I wouldn't dare to touch titanium though, but you know, I can make my own parts here. We're gonna do a project very soon on that table, so stay tuned. And about the rest of the parts, well, we've got compressed air here, we've got a bunch of tools, screwdrivers and pliers and stuff like that. And we've got some very big tools over here. So you see a huge pipe wrench, huge one inch and a half uh, wrenches and stuff like that. Lots of cool stuff here. So when I can't do with something at the house, I come over here, there's a ton of tools, lots of products on the top shelf, uh, brake cleaner, stuff like that. Basically, if you wouldn't do it in your house, I come over here and do it. Also, where I do my snowmobile stuff, as you can see here, there's some snowmobile parts in there. So snowmobile maintenance, that's where I do it. I know there's another press drill, but this one is a little bit bigger, so I can tackle some bigger jobs. Got drill bits, and that's pretty much it for this place. Lots of ag parts and bearings and bushings and stuff like that. So some people ask me, what's my background? Well, I went to school, went to college. But well, this is where the real background came from. Building machinery, fixing machinery. And then with that knowledge, you learn a thing or two about how to build snowmobile, I suppose. The grinders here, some skill saws, kit sets, oil, bench grinder, grease guns, lights, stuff like that. It's all here. Very useful place. Your nuts and bolts goes up to three quarter inch. These are some big boys, and then some lock nut washers, spring pins. You have to have an inventory like that if you have a farm. Because if something breaks, you gotta fix it now. There's a lot of tools I'm not talking about. There's just so much stuff here, but you get the idea. So that's pretty much it for the shed. Now let's go back to the house. So thank you very much for watching this video. I know it's been, well, I hope it's not being too long of a video. Uh, Usually I tend to make long videos, but hopefully this one was a little concise and uh, you enjoyed it. So thank you very much for watching and I'll talk to you soon. By the way, snowmobile sale next weekend. You want to be there. There's a lot of sleds. Thanks for watching.